Hi guys. Hello, hello. Who is that? <laughs> oh, no. no. Good evening. No, you will not enter said video picture. This is for adults only. Nope. No, Stay. seriously. Go, go away. I want to say I'm not going in there. Nope. Go. I want to say hi, but I don't want to go in there. Nobody's here. You know. No. Nobody's, Nobody's here, here, and we don't want you saying hi. Too late. It's not kid free anymore. <laughs> oh man. Let's just wait till people come on. Hey, well, Eric. Hello, hey, Eric, guys. Eric, Cedric. Kimberly, how you guys oh, did doing? You, did you hear our kiddo? She was like, yeah. I want to come say hi. We're I want to like, come in and do show tunes. No and, uh, kids allowed. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Hey, Cedric. 1936 Canada Penny. Can you... Not worth a whole lot. It's very common. Unless you have something There's funny problems. with it. Yeah. I am uncomfortable. Uh, it's a real 400,000. Is that the one that has the dot? Uh, the only way you could sell it is if you get it graded first. Because no buys to sell it if it's not graded. Because that is a rarity. 36 with dot Canada cent. I have ne I've never personally seen one in person. Hey, Adam. But I do know that it needs to go to a major auction house if you're going to sell it. And it needs to be graded. That's number one. Oh, you're happy to see us again? Oh, awesome. Look at that. Oh, our daughter and um, Eric's chase. We get along. Oh, I'm sure. Hey, what's up, guys? Hello, hello. Come and join we us. We figured we'd pop on uh, because today's the first day of March. And um, <sighs> we had plans this weekend, but uh, the weather in California helped us to uh, cancel those plans, um, which stinks because it's my birthday weekend. So, yeah, I'm not too happy about it. We, the, we're this... ready to like get out of town and uh, have some time away, which is coming up. We're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. That That's pretty much going to be what is going to be upcoming. We just uh, we finished our first coin Thanks, show. Jody. This past weekend, we um, we are entering what is going to be what I would imagine our busiest busiest time of year for the coin show yeah. circuit. Hi, Paula. Um, Manuelito says I have one dime, seventy five no mint mark. Wow. Well, if it has no mint mark, it's probably produced in Philadelphia. The one that's meaningful that everybody talks about is the proof. 1975 Roosevelt dime that has an S mid mark. But if you found one of those proof 1975s with no S mid mark, that is the big one. So it has to have that proof strike. But the business strikes are normal when they don't have a P mid mark. What would you call a dollar with a serial number 110110? 110? Yeah, I can't see. I don't yeah, have glasses. It's okay. On right now, I, I call that a home run. That's probably a seventy-five to a hundred dollar note right there. Yeah. Um, it's called a true binary, and it's repeating. So, um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, that, Adam. That, that's, everyone. A, that's a crazy note right there. Thanks for the happy birthdays. I will officially be the big. How old will I be? Forty-seven. 47. Yes, on Sunday. So, on three-three, I will be forty-seven. So she wanted to do a live tonight, so we're going to let her lead off. What would you like to talk about? Oh, we're, well, we were going to talk about um, our upcoming shows and all the fun stuff that we're going to be doing over the next few months. Yeah. yeah can, can you elaborate? Do tell. So we are um, leaving our house on the 11th, so 10 days we're going to count down. And we are driving um, over the Sierra, not the Sierras, the Rocky Mountains heading to Colorado. We, we opted to do a little bit of a drive instead of flying um, to go to Colorado Springs. So we'll be going to the ANA show here and we're taking our uh, little one. She's going to have a good time. She's going to have a blast. Yeah. So plan is to stop at some museums along the way and 
And apparently um, we're picking up Eric on the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to see um, uh, Coins and Ghouls, Adam. Uh, we're going to see him there. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna see you here in a couple of weeks, Adam, and then we're also gonna see you a couple months later in June when, when we're we go doing to the, Tulsa. the Tulsa show. So the little yeah. is going with us um, to Colorado Springs because we're, you know, with her being homeschooled, we want to take the opportunity to, you know, let her enjoy some museums and a nice little trip with mom and dad. Um, the, our older daughter is gonna stay home, and she will. She'll be uh, caring for the dogs and working while we're yeah. gone. Well, so. uh, Adam, it's funny you brought that up because I thought about it. And I was wondering if you wanted to join us to go to the Denver Mint Ooh. on one of those days. Because it's there. That it's, would be fun. It's close by. Um, so. We're staying at the Broadmoor for two mm -hmm. nights. Um, so we'll have to plan something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want it all to be just a drive because it's it's kind of a drive. It's like 1,200 miles. See, uh, Adam, yeah. said, Adam said, sure. Oh, fun. Do Let's you, go. Do the I'm tour all, at the Denver Mint. That's I, awesome. I'm down. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm all about like learning the minting process and all of that stuff. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, as I get more into coins and more interested, I want to know how it all works. So, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. So Hey, there you go. Good Witch is Randy Black Knight. Oh, I knew the name. I knew the name hey, looked Randy. familiar. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Oh, good to see you on here. Yeah. So uh, we uh, we have a an amount of time carved out for the ANA Money Show. Um, it, it's it's not going to be all about just the coin show, but we intend on uh, checking out some of the uh, the seminars and the uh, we also have a few people that we know yeah that are going to be guest speaking at the ANA. Um, and we have fr we have other yeah. friends that'll be there as well, so we'll be around if you guys mm -hmm. if anyone is going to uh, be at the ANA, come find us, come say hi. We'll be um, we'll be around. Yep. We'll be, we'll be there for a few days. Couple of days. Couple of days. Yeah, we so, come in on the fourteenth and we leave on the sixteenth. So yeah. we also have to drive back home so I can get back to work by the nineteenth. So. Yep. So uh, yeah, we have that coming. Uh, we have that coming in two weeks. I just we just had our first show last weekend. Uh, probably one of the busiest shows that I've ever seen. Yeah, in SAC. And um, yeah, it was a two day event, and I talked to the organizer, and he said this is amazing. And what's even better is that there is an abundance of younger people getting into the hobby. Yes. Something that... Um, it's one of the things <clears throat> you've kind of strived for a long time. Yeah, long well, long. It, it was kind of an unknown, you know, whether or not that that this hobby was going to translate well into the newer collector base. And so far, it's uh, it's worked out pretty well as far as I could see. Uh, you know, at the, um, at the Sacramento show... I've seen a lot of kids from as young as like our our daughter, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of like 9, 10, 11 year old range going all the way up into the mid 20s. And there is a pretty healthy amount of people in that demographic um, that that were in attendance. They were checking out the bargain bins. They were doing deals on on nicer type coins. They were buying silver, you know. Uh, no dime bag. The hobby is not done. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's horse shit. <laughs> Triple nine says, look for you on whatnot. Tonight yeah. was supposed to be a night off. We were actually supposed to be in Reno, uh, this evening yeah. celebrating my birthday. Yeah. And <laughs> unfortunately with blizzard like conditions, um, we, we opted to cancel and not go. Yeah. I'm still stuck in this damn place <laughs> with nowhere to go. Poor babes. Uh, now I gotta find out what I'm gonna do for the next two days. Uh, we're gonna do the movies tomorrow. We're gonna go out to <sighs> dinner on my birthday. Yeah. So. So. Yep. But uh, it's Sean a, will be it's back. It's about be about celebrating this one over here. Me. Yeah. Um, Sean will be on on Tuesday on whatnot, so you can catch him live there again. Yeah, um, hey, if I would have known that we were gonna be home, I would have done a show tonight. But you know, maybe it's a little for the best. too late. Yeah. 
Well, it's way too late. Yep. Yeah. And I'm I'm baking bread tonight, so I'm I have a sourdough starter, so I'm looking over to see if it's rising. Get some nice yummy homemade bread tonight. <sighs> yeah, it's cool. She's make she's making uh, her own you know bread from scratch, and that's that, that's some pancakes. We don't have to buy pancake mix. We don't have to buy bread anymore. And no, um, and we're not buying pizza crust either because I'm making that, pizza that shit crust is, too. It's getting expensive. It's like five, six dollars for a loaf of bread. Now the bread that we get, we're trying to be a little bit more healthier, and mm -hmm. we buy the healthier shit. We're not eating it as much, yep. so you know. And we actually did pretty good last time. I made a couple of. And of bread, bread and cheese are my Achilles heels uh, in life. And it's always been like that since <laughs> I was a kid. So I, I'm glad we're kind of like doing things um, a little bit, um, a little bit healthier, so that way I could stick around and do a few more videos for you guys. You know, whether you like it or not, I want to. <laughs> I want to try and get to at least five hundred thousand subs before I kick the bucket. Not hey. that. Not that that's any indication Don't of. Don't say that. <laughs> um, so, uh, pa pa Paula, I'm glad you're fielding some of the questions in here. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to catch up on uh, on what's going on here. Like, uh, was it Calvin? What did Calvin say in here? I got a 1916 DDO Buffalo for three bucks. I didn't even know there was one. I only bought because I felt bad for the whatnot streamer. Oh, goodness. Wow. That can't be me. I would have found that. Now, it is, does that one have a date? Not that it matters, but having the date on there, it's always a lot more appealing to the eye for that FS101. Paula says, the odds are that you have a copper 82D small date. That's a tough one. Yeah. Where is who blocked? Someone said someone's blocked. I don't know. So yeah, I love you too, Lisa. <laughs> I I'm I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, th things appear to be getting a little bit pricier. It depends. Some of the nicer type coins. Um, like the really, really strong market acceptable stuff is incredibly ridiculously high. Uh, I've seen, um, I, I've seen some of the prices, um, go up about 10 to 20% depending on the coin. And, um, you know, it's just, yeah, I mean, I, I'm constantly on heritage auctions, great collections, and some of the coins that I personally want to buy, it's kind of getting hard to do that at a reasonable amount of um, money. So, yeah, so aside, aside from the money show, um, do you have trouble getting feel it? Yes, yep. Joshua, we do. All we get is Denver minted coins. Um Points west of the Mississippi River, which seems to be the cutoff. Um, I mean, just ask Coin Schools, Adam. Uh, you know, he's in the Midwest, and I think he's still getting Denver minted coins where he's at. And people in uh, Texas, Oklahoma, um, all up and down, you know, the Dust Bowl, people are getting Denver coins. So if you're on the East Coast right now, you guys are loving life. I, I know I would be. I'd be at the bank every day buying coin. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of that that incentive um, because the men has really screwed up on a lot of things uh, over the last like 10 years that there is a lot to look for if you can find these coins with a P mint mark on it. Lisa, smiling Lisa, does Texas and Missouri get Denver also? Yeah. Yeah, you would figure if you were in like Missouri, Arkansas, and some of those those states that are like you would think if you looked at a map, you're like, oh yeah, those are more kind of like they they favor the East Coast side of the U.S. They still get Denver struck coins, and it, it's it's crazy how they uh, how they do that. Uh, Derek, if you wanted to, buddy, you could send us an email, um, info at livecoinqa.com. And, um, we, you know, the, that's going to be a web um, um, email for our panel group, the Live Coin Q&A. We could check it out for you. 
So I think Paula may, might have already posted the she email <coughs> um, in there. But found a 1984 Lincoln Penny and God We Trust looks like stamped over different words. Sent photo to email. Okay. Yeah, awesome. we'll, we'll check it out. Do you know what email you sent it to, um, Darla? Because there's really only one email that we're funneling through inquiries to. Um, the Blue Ridge Silverhound email currently is not fielding those type of things because they're kind of like scattered. They're going all over the place and they need to, they need to go to one section and the live coin Q and a email is that. So if you haven't done that, um, then, you know, we could, we could take a look. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's no other way. And, um, you know, if, if you send it, send it to us again, it's info at livecoinqa.com, then we could go ahead and uh, take a look at it. And if you're not watching them on Monday nights, you should be. So yeah. what time on Monday do you guys go live? Uh, it's uh, 5, 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. And then everywhere in between. And then every, yeah, if you're in the central time zone, you know, you're at 7.30 and all right. So. Adam says, I was bidding on a 1913 Buffalo Type 1, ended up being an FS1802 with the provided great photos. LOL, someone ran it up, but I still want it. Wow. That's that's outstanding. The FS1802 Type 1. Huh. I forgot what that one looks like. I I, I think it's pretty impressive. Where would a new collector start buying coins from us on whatnot? Just kidding. <laughs> you, you have to feel comfortable with going to places that, that, that offer quality pieces. If, if you're looking at, at getting into the hobby to collect and invest and you want that kind of like healthy balance of both, which I would certainly do if you're starting out. And even if you're starting out at the very bottom where you have say, well, I only have 20 to $25 a week to invest in some sort of collectability of my coins, you know, you have to try and go for quality over quantity. Um, and that's something that I've learned um, over the years. And I, I've slowly been selling the quantity to buy the quantity. Or the, the quality. Sorry, did, did I screw that up? Yeah, you've been selling the quality to buy the... No, no I've been... Backwards. Yeah, I'm selling <laughs> the quantity. I don't want nearly as much stuff all over the place to buy the quality. You want the quality. Yeah. Like I'll, we want the quality. I'll sell 100 coins at a dollar a piece so I could buy one coin at $100. And that is exactly where I want to be. Plus, it's going to give you a whole new appreciation for the various different types of series of coins that that the U.S. is responsible for producing, you know, at various points in the yeah. last 250 years. Yeah. Joshua so, says, why does Denver do a better job of perfecting coins than, than Philadelphia? They just, they, they don't, um, if you look at the grand scope of things, the Philadelphia Mint is largely responsible for producing and spearheading a lot of programs. So if you can imagine being responsible for producing a much larger volume of coin over the course of 12 months. And you also have to oversee these various other programs. You know, there's a, a Silver Eagle program here. There's another commemorative program here um, because they produce other things other than just the business strike coins. They do everything. Um, so they have less headcount for employees and more responsibility to produce more coins. Therefore, the quality kind of takes a back seat. Um, Denver Mint doesn't have that, that problem. They do, for the most part, just business strike coins. The San Francisco Mint does some of those specialty strikes like proof coins and you know silver eagles and various other things. So um, if you look at what each different mint facility does all across the network for the US, there, you can even add the West Point Mint. They do Silver Eagles and things like that. Uh, you look at what they're responsible for. The Philadelphia Mint is responsible for a grand amount of the things that get produced, both for um, for circulation and also for the collector base as well. 
So that's kind of a long, drawn-out explanation about that. Hmm. Adam says $1,000 coin. Triple Nine says, I cheated and picked up an 82 Lincoln cent with a huge cut from Great Collection. MS6300, did I overpay? No, you didn't. I mean, it's already graded. If, you're get, if you got it from Great Collections, it's already graded. You did good. Um, you didn't make a boatload of money. You didn't lose money. You, you just got a very nice collector piece. And like I said, cut, die, break type errors are some of the kings in the error world right now. And the pricing is so wildly consistent that you don't have to worry about selling it and making your money back. Mm, Kimberly says, got one from you. <laughs> Yes. Got a few. I, I like to have, you know, the best best mix of different coins uh, on my show. So Eric says, rolls yeah. from the bank. Paula says, learn about them before you start buying. Buy a book. Yeah. Go to the Denver Mint. Come join us. Well, we'd love to see you. You got to know how the coins are produced before you can understand errors and varieties. Mm, Jody says, can I send a photo of a strange 46 nickel? Absolutely. Where do you send it? Info at livecoinqa.com yep yeah i'm at one i-94 in the middle of north dakota i get everything in the small towns they don't circulate out very much i just signed up for the usa coin book today yeah i hear a usa coin book because i know of a couple other people that sell on that platform with some success you know it's actually a great alternative to ebay uh, because there is enough enough of a collector base there's enough there's enough money floating around on usa coin book to support the livelihood of people that like to sell on that platform um yep buy the books we've been giving away a lot of books here recently cherry mm -hmm. pickers guides uh strike the rich with pocket change and a few others too we've been giving away free albums dance goes whitman's you name it well we've been having a lot of fun giving away a lot of educational content that i think is um some of the most important things carl's actually asking um ms63 how big is the cut at least you have a date i i say you did okay yeah if that's a readable date that's a huge plus for a hundred dollars it has to be a pretty right good size cut um, so yeah, I would say, I would say it's solid, you know, Eric says, don't start with the scope. Don't start with the scope. Exactly. Yeah, you just that's, that's way overkill. You just um, need a loop. A lot of the most relevant things, if you could see it with a standard magnifier or jeweler's loop, you're in good shape. Yeah. If you have to use anything stronger than that, then it's not really that important. And loops are portable. You can take them anywhere you need to. You yep. know, we take them to uh, coin shows so that we can get get a good look. So yeah. what kind of loop? Like what is the best? Uh, the, the favorite out there is a 10 times triplet. So it's got three lenses. So each lens that you remove away from it, you know, will take the power down uh, three times. So it could be a three times magnifier. It could be a six and, and a nine or 10. That's kind of So cool. yeah, it's, it, they're very handy. My pineapple one isn't like that. <laughs> no, it's still good though. Yeah, it's it works, like a, it works it was really it like good. A 10 times power. Yeah, 10 times I would say is a great average power magnification for a lens. Mm -hmm. So if you have to get stronger in that, again, you're trying too hard and you're trying to, you're trying to, ju to justify what you're seeing with that much stronger magnifier. Uh, Adam says the mint director has really tightened up quality control. Uh-huh. Yeah, I could, I could tell there hasn't been too many crazy errors here in the last, uh, like, 12 months. Yeah. So. Kimberly says, unfortunately, very poor eyesight. Yes. I usually actually yeah, wear glasses now when I just haven't. I didn't wear them today for some reason. But, um, yeah, so I will have glasses on and use a loop, so. Calvin got a box of penny rolls. Um, thought they would be newer. I haven't opened them, so they are still unknown to me. But there are some BU gems on some ends and some nice red toners. They look, they were looked through, but two rolls. Yeah, that yeah that's part of it. You know, um, I've been going through some boxes of half dollars here recently, and they've all been searched. Have they been searched for everything? No, because no, we found some, you found some pretty good. You, you can't assume that everything's been searched through, especially your casual 
um, Silver Hunter of half dollars, they're going to forget things like like die varieties and errors. You know, like I found a couple really nice errors out of these boxes. You know, not to mention other things. So you found not intended for NIFCs. Yes, I was yeah. like, wait, what yeah. is that called? You found a ton of NIFCs. <laughs> Quite a bit. Um. According to, Carl says, according to PCGS, coins should be graded as they do under a single light source with incandescent bulb, 75 watt. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's that's kind of what they're doing right now. Uh, every coin, in theory, is looked over by a few people, not just one person. So you, you also have to remember, like, oh, I can't believe they graded it that low. Well, it's not one person. There were a few people that looked at it, so... Are you familiar with the 1998 cent on foreign planchet? Uh, well, there's a lot of those that did occur. You know, I, I wouldn't put it past some firm to do something like that. Um, because, you know, our U.S. mints have produced other coins for other countries. So there's that possibility that some of those planchets, you know. And Calvin says, I heard it from you yesterday, mm -hmm. actually, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff out there. If, if something looks weird, you put it aside. And then, you know, you send us a picture and then we'll take a look at it. We might have, the worst that could happen is we have you weigh it, you know? Um, because weight can also... And, and, and a lot of people generally, they underestimate the importance of taking weight of the coins. Because uh, if something something was struck on a foreign planchet, you know, there's going to be an obvious difference between what, like, let's say, a Lincoln said that strung, struck on a 3.1 gram bronze planchet to, you know, something else from a different country that might be a little bit thinner. So. Smiling Lisa says she loves how you provide coins for all level, levels of collectors. <laughs> New season, broken rich. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not going to say rich, uh, maybe more so um, kind of like the the people that make a decent amount of money that keeps them in that middle class, you know, um, because, you know, in all honesty, on, on the platform, when I sell on there, very rarely do I have coins to offer for $500 or higher. I could put some in there, but knowing my audience and knowing knowing the other sellers on the platform... Um, there's a, there's a time and place for those much higher price coins. Um, it's just, it hasn't been me yet, you know, and it might be in the future, but as of right now, I feel more comfortable in selling a lot more of the more affordable, nicer stuff, you know, um, stuff that you would be proud to own and stuff that has a lot of liquidity, you know, in the future. And that's why I don't sell that much gold either, because gold can be a little bit out of reach. I like to give some away. We've given yeah. away some gold. Yeah, we did. Uh, some one gram bars and, and a few other things. I gave away um, so you, my... Yeah, you gave yeah. away your one-tenth ounce beautiful gold. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean... It's okay. That's, that, I, love, I love to give away to people. It just... That's yeah. what... Honestly, that's what makes my heart happy. Someone asked really quick, are you familiar with the rounds that Wells Fargo and the company... Made in 1902, commemorating their 50th anniversary? I am not. Yeah, you know, I, I don't claim to know 100% of everything out there. There's a lot of things I've never personally seen. Um, and that's, that, that again, that's that's me being humble enough to say, like, I'm constantly still learning. You know, I'm not the end-all, be-all. I'm not that one person that's, like, the gateway of, like, oh, I get what Sean's saying. That makes me, you know, top of the class, top of the heap. Uh, you know, I, I can hang with uh, the big dogs of the John Sullivan's of the world, the Q David Bowers. Absolutely not. Uh-uh. Uh, I am, you know, I, I am just a resource that knows a good fair amount of things. It's more of a blessing than a curse that I know as much as I do, but also lean still to folks like Paula Bloom and Adam Chambers. And, and Shannon. And Shannon yeah. and Amanda. You know, there are things that, that we have talked about, like, oh, I didn't know that even was a thing. And, um, you know, Paula is a wealth, wealth of knowledge. You know, she learns from the best. And we also have 
a great supporting cast of other folks, the Joe Cronins and, you know, we just had Sean too on to talk about uh, improper alloy mix, woody, wood green, you know, Lincoln sense. Um, so, you know, it's like I learned a whole bunch more of different things because of these subject matter experts. It, yeah. It's just extra stuff that I get to soak into my brain. But no, I do not know 100% of everything there is in the, the world of, you know, numismatics and paper money. Um, yeah, again, it's a very deep rabbit hole that could go on for many miles. So. Did you see Sullivan is doing air attributions for? That, that's actually pretty cool. You know, I, I, you know, there are worse people I would trust to do in that. Yeah, and you did bring it up earlier today. And uh, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Calvin, thanks. Yeah. Um, see ya. I know you're running out. Um, yeah. Thanks for the happy birthday. Thanks. Thank um, you, buddy. Thank you. So uh, we're going to try and keep it uh, right around. It's at 31 minutes. So um, to kind of close things out, you know, we have the a a Money Show coming up in like 10 days or 11, 12 days, whatever it is. And then we're also going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Northeast Oklahoma Coin Show. And it's also going to be a meet and greet okay. of all of the major players in the YouTube community for <laughs> for coins and money and silver. You know, guys like Rob Finds Treasure, Silver Seeker, Live Coin Q and A panel. You know, oh, we're, we're all going to be there. Ida will be there. Ida will be there. I love Ida. She's one of my favorite. So people that's ever. coming up the second week of June, I believe. And uh, and then there's a possibility that we might add in what a Long Beach. Yeah, we're talking late, late, later in the year. Yeah, we're talking um, about a few things. We're going on a cruise in August. Yeah. So we have a very long, chaotic year, and then we're still going to be doing a lot of the local Sacramento shows. Mm -hmm. So if you're which out this way, yeah, which kind of a um, uh, totals around five or six more for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So we're we are going to have our imprint all over the place in uh, not only the local coin show scene, uh, but probably the entirety of Northern California. We might even do a couple Central Valley shows. Uh, I don't know don't if I want to do, I don't know. To the North Sea. Yeah, don't go to the <laughs> North Sea. Don't go to the Bay Area. <laughs> That's why I hear it because it, we do, everybody's car gets broken into. Oh my goodness. They don't, not everybody. But this man will not go down to the Bay Area any longer. You can't, I'm like, you I want to go to San Francisco and I want to go. I'll, I'll go to Monterey or Santa Cruz because I know we're going to drive around that shit. But you can pay me to go to Oakland, San Francisco, or a, not even our old hometown of Fremont. I would not go there. Not right now. So the numbers don't lie. Everybody, Everybody's car gets breaking into. If you so much as leave it at, at an In-N-Out Burger or a Starbucks. So... And actually, I have heard people are leaving their trunks open now just so they don't break windows because it's more expensive... To have your car broken into and have your Tesla windows broken, although we don't have a Tesla. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. stay away from the fog. But I still want to go to San Francisco. San Francisco, there's museums and things that I want to go to. But uh, yeah. Yeah, she she could take her daughter with her. Uh, I'll be here doing other things. Here's the thing: we just <laughs> we stay at a hotel outside, and we just don't bring stuff. I'm not even interested in doing that. Sorry. No, you're, it's fine. You know, you could go take... With my car, we, we don't have to go, put anything go, in the... Go take a friend. Go take your daughter. My husband will not go. Nope. Can't change my mind. That right now. <laughs> um, what else? They got a lot of cleaning up to do. Let's put it that way. I've been going through some Lincoln sent coins and found some with no mint mark, but they, but don't know what they are worth yet. That's innocent biscuits. That's that's a funny name. <laughs> well, just to let you know, innocent biscuits. Uh, you just had to say that name. <laughs> a a predominant amount of Lincoln cents without a mint mark were all produced at the Philadelphia Mint. With exception of one year, and that's 2017, they added a Philadelphia mint mark only to that date to commemorate the 225th anniversary of the Philadelphia mint. So that was, it's more or less, 
you know, a lot of people don't think about it. It's kind of a commemorative coin in a way. All right. And that's why only on 2017, so you have that P mint mark. Now, it would be a rarity to find a 2017 Philly without the mint mark on there. So, yeah, kind of, kind of interesting. But. Um, Jody says it's been up. Oh, Jody's talking to Carl. No mint mark on business strike sense is totally normal. That's mm -hmm. what Paula says. Yep. And West Point made some as well. Except 1922. Love, love, love all of the knowledge that you have in that brain of yours, Paula. And Eric. Yeah. And Adam. And Shannon. And Shay. Was Shannon on here? No, Shannon's no. not. Uh, I think too. Amanda was on here for Yes, and Amanda. Yay. Yeah. Amanda's coming to... Uh, Tulsa. Tulsa. Yay. Yeah. So excited for everybody. It's going to be a lot of fun. But... We're going to do more videos at the coin shop on Core Golden Coin. I want to thank um, Chad Vickers, the owner of the shop. Uh, he's been doing really well. Yeah, he's he's uh, hit the hit the ground running. He is uh, he's an inspiration. Yeah. Because he he allows me to see the the inner kind of like sanctum of how a coin shop works from from the very beginning from the opening and you know we talk about you know just things we talk about everything and we're going to bring more of that to you guys so I, hopefully you guys um up to this point have been enjoying our um our coin shop series of um videos and we're going to be bringing more of those to you here in the future the you know for as long as we're all still around so well, did you have anything else you wanted to say in no. closing? What or? did you say, Jody? Jody said, oh, y'all missed my message to you, Mrs. Blue. Well, you're going to have to go back and, and find Jody right there. Okay. Uh, it's been a pleasure to chat with a fellow enthusiast. Be safe, everyone. And I'm sure there was more right there. See? I always, you guys are my number one to watch. I don't trust many. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks, Jody. Yeah, we'll be back on tomorrow with another PCMR. You know, more people are doing more roll hunts. 2024 coins are currently hitting the streets right now. That's another reason to go out there and find some stuff. Um, paper money has been extraordinarily overachieving these days. And it's funny that they even is, you know, something to talk about. But fancy serial number collecting and hunting for these, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, everybody's been finding them and they're selling really well. The uh, inkwell contamination errors on the newer uh, $1 bills that bear the date like 2013 and 2017. Yeah, people are having a lot of fun finding those and they're selling for 50, 60 bucks online. And the major um uh, grading companies, if you had to grade them, they they actually attri attribute them inkwell contamination error. That's so cool. yeah, there's a lot to look for out there, guys. Yeah, for um, uh, face value. Who should they look for? Kingdom Currency, right, Sam? Yeah, he's a good resource. Yeah, Sam's a yeah. Good he's on Facebook. Him. He's on whatnot. Um, I think he started his own YouTube as well. So he's yeah. Uh, yeah, and he, he just he just has a new baby girl right now, so that might be kind of taking over a little bit of his time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's one of the best out there. So yeah, uh, yeah, Paula, you make a great point. You know, they are um, recognizable um, in the community, and they don't need to be graded. The only reason why I would grade it is if I know it's going to be a Jemmy, you know, like a Chris a CU sixty five and higher. Uh, but outside of that, just regular circulated examples to sell them if you don't want them. Um, and they'll they'll sell for, you know, what they're worth. And that's without grading. So, yeah. Uh, so. Who's live on whatnot right now? Oh, Kingdom Currency. Kingdom Currency. I'm going to have to go there and, um, you know, give them a shout out, say hi. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's what we wanted to do. Come on, uh, just have a little Friday night powwow. Hang talk out. about talk about what's going to be coming up here. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, J Dub, it's going to be the second week of June. That the weekend of the twelfth, I believe. I, let me. It's let's at it's at really it's at the Marriott Hotel in Tulsa. 
Let me look at my calendar really quick. Yeah, if Paula's still on, maybe she could post the dates on there for Tulsa. I uh, we're flying, so we're flying to that one. We're not driving. Yeah, no driving. Yeah, for that. that that's that one's. We're little... leaving on Wednesday the twelfth, but I think June thirteenth the... to the fifteenth. Yep. So thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and that's it. And so then, three, yeah. three, three day event. So we will. We're flying in on the twelfth, and we'll be there until the sixteenth. So if you guys are around and close to. Um, Tulsa, come see us. Come say hi. Uh, Joshua, there's a boatload of coin shops in the area where you're at. So, uh, and then they also have the Long Beach show, and then a few different various shows. Uh, they probably have a good, good, uh, probably twenty to twenty five shows in, in a calendar year. So they um, they have it all. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, who's baby? We're babysitting your truck. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's what we did, what, two years ago? Yeah. 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 When we didn't come, but this time we're coming. So. Yeah, two years in a row. It, we had fun last year, so we're going to yeah, do it again. We, we've already got our yeah. tickets, already got our hotel. We're, we're, uh, we're looking forward to coming out. Yeah, we're good to go. We're looking forward to <sighs> sitting like this on a plane again for... Like this? Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> last year, flying from Denver to Tulsa, we were crammed into... A little teeny space, and Sean popped the um, the tray table down, and it didn't quite go down. It was kind of funny. It was it was sitting on my chest. <laughs> I, I'm a big old barrel chested dude. So, um, anyways, that's what we wanted to do. We want to say we love you guys. Thank you for coming on um, on a Friday night. Yep. You could be anywhere else, but you wanted to hang out with us. Hang out. We appreciate for, you guys. for a little bit. So. We're going to head out of here. We're going to just prep for I'm the weekend. I'm actually going to go bake some bread right now. Because my bread, if you can see up on the counter, is... Yeah, I'm going to go back upstairs and, and bake my biscuits and uh, do more shipping. Okay. <laughs> you're like, what? He's silly. <laughs> back to doing taxes. Back to doing... Yeah, we're, we're doing ours next month. <sighs> for First week of April. So we're, we're looking forward to that. All um, right. So we'll see you guys. Have a great evening. See ya. Uh, have a great Thank weekend. Thank you guys so much for uh, coming to hang with us. Yeah. Good night. Thank you, Paula. Thanks, Thank you, Paula, Adam. for kind of moderating. We appreciate you. All right. See you guys.